Tides is a very intriguing approach to merging timing and programming, but I think there may be some advantages to having a little more distinction between time and data. For instance, in situations where the timing information can be known in advance of the data values, or even statically known, the compiler could produce much more efficient code. Verifying that a program will execute within the timing constraints is a difficult problem where the artificial complexity of the underlying architecture plays havoc with attempts to solve it. The best we can do today is to estimate the worst case execution time of the software and check that against deadlines. But as we mentioned earlier, the worst case execution time can be wildly larger than the average case and it can depend chaotically on non-local effects like cash spills caused by unrelated code. Using the worst case execution time to determine feasibility is not a satisfactory solution. If the implementation meets timing constraints in the worst case, it will vastly underutilize the processor and hence be more expensive than it has to be. Alternatively, if it has reasonable processor utilization, it may be impossible to verify the code will always work. There's no real way around this until the software can have detailed control over all the hardware resources in a processor. FPGAs are much better off in this respect since once the code is compiled, it will execute the same way every time. Everything we've talked about so far has implicitly assumed that we have a single global time to which everything is referenced. But many, if not most, real-time systems are distributed over multiple computational targets connected by buses and networks. Each target typically has its own clock, and even the best clocks will drift with respect to each other due to temperature differences and other factors. To create a common global time, it's necessary to synchronize or discipline clocks in a master-slave relationship. This can be done in hardware with a phase lock loop or in software with a PID control on the slave's clock, clock's rate. In the former case, it needs to be a physical wire from the master clock to the slave target. In the latter case, messages have to be sent between the master and the slave targets, and that will take up some small amount of bandwidth on whatever communication channel connects them. Clock disciplining among interconnected targets is a fundamental part of a system design, and it needs to be represented in order to specify a feasible design. So let me finish this morning with a description of an ongoing research project focused on merging the representation of timing and computation using a non-trivial distributed real-time application so that all the issues are on the table. Distributed real-time control requires that communication between the components be isochronous. In other words, there has to be a time schedule for communication that is synchronized to the real-time uh, loops on the different targets. Furthermore, the clocks have to be disciplined so they don't drift with respect to each other. We're seeking a realistic representation that does not abstract away any of the important aspects of the system. Communication channels have finite bandwidth and non-zero delays. All software takes non-zero amount of time to execute. Clocks are synchronized, but only to some finite precision. At the same time, we want to rely on the compiler to handle as many of the scheduling details as possible, realizing that in the short term at least, we'll probably have to, uh, have, to have the designer supply hints to the compiler so that it can generate efficient code and schedules. In this prototypical example, we are controlling a leather cutting machine by moving the X and Y positions of the cutter to cut out some desired shape. At the same time, we want to mon monitor the health of the machine by monitoring the vibration of each axis. From the dynamics of the machine, the designer has determined that the sampling position, sampling the position and updating the motor every 500 microseconds is sufficient to maintain accurate control of the motor speed and torque, and has therefore specified that rate for the sensor and actuator on each Rio device by connecting a wire from the timing generator. At the same time, a high-speed sensor is collecting a waveform, and the designer has determined that sampling at one microsecond is sufficient for analyzing the vibration, so he connects a wire from the timing generator to the waveform acquisition actor to specify that. The path planner on the RT controller closes the loop on cutter position, and the designer has chosen to statically configure it to one at one kilohertz rate. Since it's in a closed control loop with the controllers on the Rio devices, 
the compiler determines that the path and position data must be communicated isochronously and has indicated that by, by coloring the respective signals orange. The other communication is asynchronous and only has to meet the overall throughput requirements. This diagram is an instance of what we're referring to as a system diagram where the actors typically run in parallel and communicate using FIFOs or registers or communication buses. Opening the controller on the Rio target, the designer would see a timed loop with this control algorithm in normal lab view code. Clearly visible in this diagram is the relationship of the target clocks. The designer has decided that the RT controller is the master clock and it should discipline the clocks on the Rio devices and has specified this by wiring the RT clock to the Rio clocks. The designer can view the execution timeline calculated by the compiler. The compiler has determined that the rate of the controllers on the Rio devices must match the I.O. rates and that the execution of the sensor and the controller and actuator must be offset with respect to each other to account for the computation times and propagation delays. These relationships are shown as thin lines connecting the input sampler, controller, and output generator. The thicker lines show the same kind of relationship between the path planner and the controllers where the data is being communicated isochronously over the bus. The, bottom, uh, the bar at the bottom of, uh, shows the communication traffic on the bus connecting the RT controller and the Rio devices. The orange blocks represent the isochronous traffic and the white portion represents the time available for asynchronous communication of waveform and other data which is dynamically scheduled at runtime. If desired, the designer could interactively adjust the positions of the actors in the timeline as long as the dependencies are respected. This research is still in the early stages of conceptual design and it will undoubtedly take considerable effort to develop, but we see this as core technology for high productivity and system design in the future. Timing has been an important consideration since LabVIEW's beginning because of its emphasis on real-time I.O. We are delivering state-of-the-art timing capabilities with the time loop and time sequence in the LabVIEW RT and FPGA platforms. LabVIEW's graphical representation of computation naturally admits a clear representation of timing relationships, as well as the complexities of distributed systems that affect timing. We have innovative research going on using an approach which is different from others in our focus on distributed real-time systems and the tight integration of hardware configuration along with timing. Stay tuned for further developments. Thank you. Slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. Time keeps on slipping.